Hey guys, welcome to Outlaw Edge. So last weekend we had uh, Braden and Michael here helping out with the bike, trying to get this thing painted. And uh, they did a real nice job of getting everything in primer, getting everything wet sanded. This fender's ready to go. These panels right here are ready. Uh, the nacelle for the headlight, back fender, and then the tank. Everything was ready except for the tank. Uh, the tank had some problems. There were some spots right here and it was, uh, where they had the stretch marks in the tank from when they pressed it on the press. Um, it had some real bad stretch marks. So, you know, you can't beat those or hammer them out. So what we ended up having to do is uh, fill them with putty, just very thin coat of putty. And I mean, there's like maybe a 16th of an inch. You can see that there's not much in here, but there was a little spot right here and I feathered it out. And I'm gonna add some more putty right here and clean this up. And uh, when we were primering, we got a couple runs and I'll show you what I what I do, how you get those runs and stuff out, and how you get this primer, that cottage cheese look out of there without you know messing everything up, so that everything will be like glass smooth. And then we'll have to primer this one more time, let it dry, and then uh, do some wet sanding. And I'll try to get you, uh, try to you know each step, get you guys to watch out or whatever. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to start sanding that tank, and I'm going to use. Uh, this is 120 grit sandpaper. And one of the things I've noticed is try to use high quality sandpaper. Like 3M is a good brand and there's a bunch of other like brands from like Switzerland and stuff like that. Use a good brand. The other ones, they clog up, they tear, they fall apart. The, the sand part comes off the sandpaper and it ends up just falling apart and they're garbage. So try to use a real good high quality brand if you can afford it. Um, I'm using my uh, Lucky Blocks from Matt. Appreciate it, bro. And uh, he hooked us up with some uh, Lucky Blocks and put our logos on them and stuff. And this one is uh, eighth inch thick and it's real flexible. And the reason I'm using this is uh, on that tank, there's a lot of corners and stuff and I'll be able to uh, um, just go right around those corners, you know, sanding and, and these will just flex right around those corners like they're nothing. These blocks are awesome. Check out Lucky Blocks. The guy's awesome. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and put the sandpaper on here. And uh, like I said, I'm using a 120 grit. And this is sticky backed sandpaper. So you can stick it right on the uh, block. And then these lucky blocks have tape on them to hold on to when you're sanding. And, and it conforms right to the metal when you're uh, shaping or the fiberglass, whatever you're, whatever you're shaping on there. But I'm gonna move the tripod, sorry about the crappy camera work. And uh, right here, so you have a spot that has runs or a bad spot or whatever, and I wanna get this whole tank and all these fenders and stuff super smooth. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna use this Lucky Blocks. And you don't have to have Lucky Blocks. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I, I use other blocks too. I have these brand here. Um, these are uh, just motor garb. And these are the squishy blocks here. And then I have hard blocks that I also use. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start sanding. And you wanna wear a mask when you do this. I'm not wearing a mask right now just because I'm trying to talk. And the best way to do this is going cross hatch pattern. If you want to get the best results. And don't be afraid if you start hitting some bare metal or something, you're gonna reprime this so it's not a big deal. You wanna go one direction and then go the other direction. And you can see how these blocks go right around the rounded corner. And then after going this direction and then this direction, I cross hatch it in another direction. And another direction. And just keep doing that until you get that panel nice and smooth. And, and you can tell it's already smoothed out almost completely right there. And I feel some imperfections right here. 
But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this whole tank sanded and ready for primer. And then I'll get this spot, when I get ready to do this spot when, uh, with metal glaze with the putty, I'll film that. So I've got the whole tank blocked out. You can see where the run was. It's all gone. All the runs are out of there. Got the side panels, everything's blocked, the whole tank. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use uh, Evercoat Metal Glaze and I'll mix some of this up on the mixing board and uh, I'll get this little spot puttied in right here because it's, it's not real deep, but it's enough where you can fill it. Just a little tiny skim coat of that and then uh, block sand it off. We'll go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the metal glaze mixed up right now. And it won't take much. There's just a little tiny spot that I'm doing, so. And then this is the hardener for it. Take about a half inch or so. That's more than enough. And put it on. Want to make sure this stuff is mixed really, really good so that there's no blue hardener showing. If there's blue hardener showing, it's, it just means it's not mixed enough. And this stuff sets off pretty quick, so you got to kind of be quick about what you're doing. And then right before I spread this, I always mix it up one more time with the, with the uh, paddle. Sorry about the camera work. I'm trying to do this one handed. And that's it. I'm going to let that dry. It'll take about uh, probably 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And that'll be completely dry. And I'll be able to block it out. And then when I block it out, I'll show you what I'm doing there. And then I'll go to the primer stage also. So it's been about 10 minutes or so, and you can see it's still, it's dry here, how this is flat colored right here. And then halfway down, you see it's kind of glossy. And if you touch it, it's dry, but this is uh, still leaving like fingerprints, whatever. You can see my finger running across that and it's sticky. That shows you that it's, uh, it's not dry yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit for another, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, something like that. It's about 65 in the, in the body shop today. so. It's not too bad, but you know, you need, this stuff is chemically, it, it sets up uh, chemically, so you don't need heat, but if it's warm, it helps. You know, it'll set up if you, uh, if you put more hardener in it, more of this hardener here in it, it'll set up really fast. I mean, it'll set up in two minutes if you wanted to. So you gotta be real careful about that. Um, one of the things always, uh, by putting more hardener in it, I notice it'll make it more brittle. And uh, this stuff is it's not brittle. It's real flexible and whatever. So um, I'm going to let it sit for, like I said, another 10, 15 minutes, something like that. <clears throat> and then when I get ready to block sand it, as soon as I start sanding it, it'll start powdering off. And that's when I know it's uh, set up nice. One of the things when you're doing body work, especially on uh, surfaces that have curves like this or round spots, um, I've noticed a lot of people run their hand like this and they're not flat on the panel when they're trying to fill this, you know, the panel to see if they can find any bad spots to put putty in. And, uh, you know, lay your hand flat. I mean, I was watching a guy a while back and he was using the palm saying that, you know, you can feel all these dents and stuff and, and bad spots with your palm of your hand, but that's, that's not true. Your uh, nerve endings in your fingers, you know, those will pick up all kinds of stuff. Like right there, I just found an imperfection. I don't know if you can see that with the camera, but uh, I'll have to sand a little bit right here. And uh, you know, using the using your hand flat like this, and using the end of your fingers, it helps a lot to pick up any small dents. And then one of the one of the other tricks when you're doing body work, 
is there's dings or dents right here everywhere there's a pencil line or pencil mark and you can see they're just all over the place the whole top of the fender is just wrecked up and instead of taking putty and putting some here and then the next dent putting some here and the next dent just take the whole take the putty and fill the whole fender you know fill the whole top of the fender that way you come back you block the whole fender off and and then that gives you one smooth transition one smooth uh nice smooth finish on the top and this one's uh not been done yet so i went through and felt with my fingers and found every little spot and you can see like i said there's just tons of dents and dings and scratches and bad spots so that's what i'll do is i'll, I'll put putty on putty on here and i'll literally just come through here and just wipe this whole top of this fender and then i'll just you know it doesn't hurt to use a, a real nice quality da like the i have a snap-on da here and to run it nice and smooth and flat as long as you keep it flat and you don't you don't pick that end of it up like this and then uh, the next thing i'll do is when i knock down the glaze on the putty is i'll come through here and i'll block sand the whole panel and you know of, of course you want to do this after you hammer and dolly everything out and get it perfect um we don't use bono in the shop but we do use metal glaze every once in a while you know if there's a panel like this it's real bad or like on this motorcycle fender i mean uh motorcycle gas tank you know there's no way you know you could put a stud welder on there and pull that out and then tap it back down with a hammer but by the time you mess around with doing all that you know you're talking a couple hours it's faster just to take a little imperfection and wipe this putty like this because when i'm done this whole piece of putty right here this whole spot that i wiped will be smaller than this right here it'll just be a little tiny imperfection that's covered up with putty and everything else gets sanded off on the floor and then i'll prime this this tank one more time this thing's done it's ready for paint Another trick that'll make your life easier is when you're doing parts like, you know, small motorcycle parts like this. You can see we took the time and it literally took us probably an hour and we built these stands. We've had these stands for years, but we built them so that you can bolt fenders to them and tanks and headlight nacelles and they're just bolted to them and then the fender. And then that way you have a spot that is sturdy. that's not rattling all, all around, all over the place. And you can wet sand, you can block sand, you can primer, paint, whatever. And you know, you can take them in and out of the paint booth <clears throat> and they're super handy. So anyways, I have a, I believe this is like 220, 180, something like that. And uh, I was filming to see if this was sticky. And then what I'll do now is I'll take the glaze, I'll knock the glaze off this, knock the glaze off the putty. And then that way it won't plug up the sandpaper when I get ready to sand, when I get ready to block sand this. So I'll, I'll do that first and get it all prepped. And uh, as soon as I get it prepped, I'll go ahead and start block sanding. The other thing that I can't say enough is um, using high quality uh, supplies in your body shop. You know, don't use like Bondo brand, Bondo and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't care for it. I've used that in the past. But this uh, metal glaze that I use, is, it's, high, it's a high quality, it's fast to use, it's cheap to buy. I mean, it's, it's like 30 bucks for a quart and a quart lasts for a long time. <coughs> Excuse me, if you use it sparingly. But uh, you know, when you're done using the stuff, the, the outcome is way better than using some cheap stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and block sand this now. <clears throat> And I'm using a hard block to block sand and then I'll come back and forth this way, this way, this way, and this way like this until this is down to nothing. And you can see that, you know, I had the putty all the way up to here and it's already sanded off because all the highs will sand off and the lows, the low is going to stay. And that's where that spot is that I had uh, sanded out 
down to bare metal. I have a little bit of a lip right here. And that all feels good right there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get this tape wiped down and I'll prep all it and get it ready for primer. So the gun that I'm using, the spray gun is a blue point, a snap on gun. And it's a really nice primer gun. It's got a 1-4 nozzle. It'll lay down some primer really fast. I mean, you can put a gallon of primer down in 10 minutes. It'll just pour it on the car. And uh, the brand of paint that I'm using is Show Car Finish Monster Fill. This stuff is the bomb. If you're interested in the Monster Fill primer, uh, shoot me a text or give us a call. Uh, you know, on our website, you'll see the phone number mnoutlawcustoms.com if you're interested in the clear coat we also carry that show car finish clear coat it's badass and then the uh feather fill or the uh i'm sorry not feather fill the uh we carry the monster fill also but the mirror build uh primer sealer but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and put the monster fill primer on the tank and I already have the gun loaded up with primer. I'm gonna get my mask on and uh, I'll go ahead and spray some uh, coats on the tank. So the tank's been uh, blown off with air and then uh, I ran prep all on a rag, wiped it down, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down some primer. Well, thanks a lot uh, for watching the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you give me a thumbs down, give me a reason why you don't like the video. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the next step we're gonna do uh, Friday night or Friday morning, maybe, I'm not sure yet. Michael will be here and we're gonna be painting the bike. And when we, you know, all the steps that we do to paint the bike, to get everything ready is right now, it's done now. And then, uh, you know, throughout the day, I'll probably put on three or four more coats of primer on the tank and then uh, it looks really good. And then what I'll do is when we get ready to paint the bike Friday, uh, I'll try to do another video and show you the steps that we do to mix the paint and, and spray the color and you know all the base coat and all that good stuff. And the color that he picked is uh, like a cobalt blue, uh, real pretty color, so it should look really nice. But anyways, uh, thanks a lot for uh, watching the video and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch the video and whatever and uh, supporting my channel. Anyways, thanks a lot.